Hey guys, welcome back to a belated thing I have not finished yet. It's what if I wrote Lore Olympus season two? Now I know, I know, I've been very late to this. I'm sorry. I I'll explain. But anyways, I am Dazzling Kate and welcome to my channel for those who are new here. If you have not seen part one, I'll post that link below in the description box so you can go watch that and we'll see what's going on later on anyways welcome back for those who are old here so yeah it's been really late to post this up and i know people have been asking asking me about it for the past six months of when part two would come out and i was like okay i gotta get this done i gotta finish this but then the computer incident happened and my laptop died and all of these seasons were on that you know on the files on the computer and I couldn't save it so yeah it's really annoying to have to rewrite everything having to reestablish some some things so please please understand some of this may not make sense some of this might make sense who knows like but at least it's a lot better than what we've been given. So this is how I would have wrote Lore Olympus Season 2. Now, continuing off of Season 1, let me just break it down. You know, it still has the formula of Hades seeing Persephone in the flower field, falling in love with her. They start hanging out with each other. As, you know, Persephone takes advantage of Hestia, Artemis, and Athena's kindness and using their friendship as a cover-up for actually meeting up with Hades. And it's, it's pretty much, at the end, Hades asks Hera and Zeus for permission to marry Persephone. They both say no. Persephone tells her mom and Demeter is not liking it one bit. So, yeah. That's the best way I can sum it up of how I would have written season one. But you can go check out the video down below. <sighs> Sorry, I do not have art for this one. As, again, pictures were lost. Files were lost. I was not happy that day. I was sad, annoyed, frustrated. You get the works. <laughs> but I do have season two written down. I'm working on season three. Uh, that might be posted in a month or so. I'm kind of giving it space to relax. Maybe it might, might be sooner if I decide to push and finish the ending to that. As I am still rereading some of the previous Lore Olympus episodes and trying to figure out what to do with specific ideas. Blah, blah, blah. You get the picture. <laughs> so grab your drinks. Get some popcorn. This might be a long one. Sorry for the snorting. My allergies are up, so I apologize. So season two picks up with Hera and Zeus still talking to Hades after what happened with everything else. So Hera tells Hades to give up on Persephone, telling him he's rushing into proposing and he's trying to find someone to replace his former wife who is dead. Zeus is hesitant to speak, but agrees with Hera, also trying to sympathize with his brother. And, you know, he leaves, Hades leaves them after they tell him that, you know, maybe you're rushing into this. Maybe you're overthinking this. Like, try and take time and figuring it out, that kind of thing. So, Hades realizes Hera might be right and is probably rushing into things Due to wanting the feeling of being loved, that his former wife, Luce, who he's been trying to move on from, trying to put Persephone into her place. And, you know, he decides to, he needs to get some more therapy during the time while he's away from Persephone, trying to kind of figure out what exactly does he need? What does he want? That kind of thing. So... His therapist suggests that he put all of his feelings into a letter and burn it and hope that he can move on. That, that kind of advice. Like, I'm not a big therapist person. Don't know much about that kind of thing. But I have heard that it does help with 
like burning a letter of putting all your feelings into something and burning it to kind of let it go. (sighs) Anyways, back with Persephone, Demeter forces her to focus on her duties as a spring goddess. Weeks turns into months without hearing back from Hades. Finally, she decides to write to Hades, pulling Hermes to help her send a letter to Hades as a favor in considering her Hermes is actually working with Hades in the other world. Like, did I get the right character? Like, my br- brain right now, I'm just like, wait, did, did I get that right? Please tell me I got that right. Did I get it right? I know, I'm just... Mm. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, Yeah, I got it right. Anyways, so one of the episodes, Hades is working and gets confronted by his teenage apprentice. Yes, Thanatos is an apprentice. I'm not going to have like, you know, some of the stuff I can see kind of working, but... Uh, a son kind of figure I, I i don't like apprentice is all i could really come up with because you know i'm a big batman fan and like honestly i'm just like eh, the best thing you could really call some of his robins are apprentices so so that's the kind of vibes i'm working with here still family in some ways but apprentice Anyways, Hades already has a problem with Thanatos doing his job properly as Thanatos is just doing, you know, Thanatos stuff. He still does his job, just not as efficient as he should be. Hermes enters, you know, the room, interrupting their conversation. And what Thanatos telling Hades the reason why he's not able to do his job properly, you know, Clearing show like clearly showing Hades ignoring his young apprentice, not really giving a shit. You know, he's dealt with this most of his life after he's been tossed to become, you know, god of the you know, dead. So yeah. I would imagine Thanatos and Hades not really having a good relationship at the beginning, but it becomes better. And no, it's not because Hades gives Thanatos a sandwich. Come on, guys. Like, can we have better development than that? It's it's a funny moment, yes, but it doesn't make any sense to make it... Like, I, I don't know. I think with the two characters like that, they kind of need some more pushing in a way where it's not a sandwich that just tells them that he's a good dad, you know? that That's kind of... It, it gets a chuckle out of, few, out of a few of us, but it doesn't really... It'll become something good. Okay. Anyways. Realizing it's a letter from Persephone, he tells both of them to leave his office as he decides to write a letter to, to her to explain his feelings. As you know, he at first the therapy thing it's it's not working well for him but you know after ignoring it for this long and thinking hey maybe she is interested it continues on it it really does so as he finishes the letter he calls forth a snake spirit of sorts because i I don't know it's like I, i thought it was kind of funny that in some versions of Hades and Persephone's story that Hades came into the form of a snake to seduce Persephone and I was like it would be kind of funny if he just sent snakes in his place to just deliver the letters like coming out of little cracks and going to the garden or something I think that would be interesting so I put it in there so you know he basically sends snakes to deliver his mail to Persephone that he, you know, loves. Okay. 
the response letter gets to Persephone maybe an episode or two later, as we do have to have some kind of filler here. I, I feel like if it's delivered immediately, it's like, can we just let them have their time away from each other? Like, we're, we're, I think for this, it would be shown that Persephone is dealing with day-to-day -day life, living with her nymph friends, with her sister, Despiona, or Desi, as I call her, because I can't say her name to save my life. So, yeah, we're showing how Persephone deals with life on Demeter's property and her land, basically. Learning to adapt better. Trying to, like, do things more unpredictable with being, you know, the goddess of spring. And unlike being a, you know, organized and everything's in order kind of gal, I would think that Demeter would be kind of annoyed that all of what Persephone has put up is just, like, not to her standards it's not really pretty it's not like I mean yeah it's gorgeous but she would think it's not you know efficient it's not organized it needs to be organized like her that's one of the traits I kind of liked from Laura Olympus that I wanted to put in here so yeah she's trying to make it unpredictable pretty and Demeter's not here for it she she asks you know why all the time like you know she's her prized child but that's the one flaw she dislikes about Persephone is that she's not organized and efficient and all of that. Like, I would imagine that's one of the big reasons why Demeter does not care for Persephone for being disorganized, clumsy in some ways. Some of these plants were made, you know, accidental. Some new species accidental because Persephone wanted to see different things. And Demeter wasn't there for it. <laughs> okay. Um, she actually receives the letter in the garden where she meets the snake. And she has to hide the letter immediately when confronted by her sister, Desi, who is dealing with the shit end of the stick as she is not loved greatly by Demeter for what she is supposed to represent, which is the assault of... Demeter by Poseidon and I, I wanted to do a little bit more to explain that part but not in a shoving it in your face kind of situation where we don't really see the entire like you know we don't see that s story it's implied that it happened and I know this story in a lot of different versions it does happen after Persephone is abducted I get it. I had one person actually message me about that. And they're like, but it happened after, you know, Persephone was kidnapped. And I'm like, yeah, but I figured if Rachel isn't going to keep true to some of the timeline stuff, then for the version I'm writing, it shouldn't have to, but it would still kind of use storytelling in a way to kind of go into the importance of these events and how maybe changing them a little bit for different time periods could probably help for a modern retelling. But again, it's it's messy, I know. So yeah, Persephone dealing with how to respond as Demeter a few days later tells Persephone she has to do better for herself. And, you know, she tries to finally confront the elephant in the room, which is the conversation they had about Hades in the previous, like, you know, months ago, weeks to months ago, where Persephone said she loved him and she was like, no. And so Demeter is awkwardly trying to tell Persephone she doesn't need a man to help her. She doesn't need to be hurt by them. Just basically giving a mother, like a mother's talk to Persephone to kind of uplift her spirit not really doing a good job as you know conversations and feelings isn't one of Demeter's strong suits yes she can show love towards her nymphs towards you know her beloved daughter in some like positive ways but awkward and negative 
feelings have been always awkward for her to go through, like trying to figure out the right words to say for the occasion. So it, it's kind of a debate there. And, you know, she kind of pushes Persephone to be like Artemis or Athena and even her sister, Hestia. And, you know, do all these things for their com their community. And this kind of pushes Persephone to realize she needs to figure out another option. Like, she doesn't want to fit into that cookie, you know, cookie mold, uh, like cookie cutter mode, like... Is that the is that the saying? I, I don't know if that's the saying. Like I, I'm sorry if I don't make sense there. But she doesn't want to fit into what her mother is trying to push her to be because she knows she doesn't want to. She knows she doesn't want to be single forever. She knows she doesn't want to be like these other goddesses. She respects them, but she just she wants something more than just being what her mother expects her to be. Okay, so also, like I mentioned, Desi's story is in the background, is that she's trying to prove to Demeter that she's the superior daughter. Demeter, however, doesn't care. She's annoyed with Desi's pushiness to punish Persephone and trying to make things harder for her, eventually being pushed to focus on her chores more and, you know, not really get getting the amount of conversations that Persephone has, amount of time to hang out like Persephone has. Like, all the attention is pushed onto Persephone, showing the stress levels of not having, like, you know, space for herself, as Desi is desperately trying to get that. It, it, I think that would have been so interesting to see in Lore Olympus, is to see the sister dynamic that... You know, it's not like they're super against each other. It's just Desi trying to, you know, trying to find the best way to pull their mom's intent, pull their mom's attention onto her. And it's difficult because Demeter will always love Persephone before Desi. And that's what makes her so upset. But yeah, um... I gotta take a sippy sip and I'll continue. Anyways, as for Desi's story, even more, it's revealed that Desi doesn't realize who her father is. She stopped asking asking questions from an early age, realizing how uncomfortable Demeter got. And so throughout the next few months, Persephone watches her mother's patterns of when she would go to Olympus for business or to visit Hera or Hestia, going to the underworld. Well, she would basically be going to the underworld as her nymph friends, who I have yet to name because eh. I couldn't come up with any interesting names so let's just make them characters that actually interact with Persephone and isn't just killed off without anyone knowing their names but maybe they'll it'll be revealed like throughout the series going I don't know So yeah, Persephone would go to the underworld as her nymph friends would distract Demeter if she were to come back early, trying to like cause, you know, some chores to be misled and some papers that need filing or something, something to basically have Demeter focused on until Persephone can come back. During one of her dates with Hades, she explains, like, Persephone explains she wants to just relax and do what she's supposed to do, not have everything so organized and dull from her mother. She grows curious about Hades and what he likes about her. Hades admits that her beauty isn't like any other, expressing that Hades... Wait, wait, oh my gosh. 
I fucked up with the wording here because I was so focused on writing. Uh, I'm reading off my list to, to kind of give you guys an understanding. And I accidentally put Hades instead of Persephone. But let me rephrase that. Expressing that Persephone is like a rose among the dandelions of women. Yeah, I know. I know. Very not a good metaphor, but eh. She then, you know, Persephone proceeds to ask, what does Hades feel about her aside from her looks? Kind of going past, you know, the whole, oh, she looks so hot kind of thing. Kind of pushing Hades to kind of think of, huh, what do I find el like else attractive about her? And I feel like that is something that really lacks in the series where it's like, oh, Persephone's cute. She has a heart shaped ass. She's 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 so small and tiny. How how is anyone going to hold her like a little innocent like girlfriend and shit like come on. So this question is a question is asked about how he feels about her aside from her looks. So Hades tries to figure out what to say. He's bad at expressing himself and admits her presence in, her presence is warm and inviting. If it made sense to her, like she's the flower and he's the bee. Persephone kind of laughs at his dad jokes. And I would imagine Hades would probably try to have like some kind of joke, like some kind of dad jokes to kind of be more inviting towards people he wants to get close to. But uh, admittedly, Zeus, Poseidon, and any one of his other relatives that are close to him or associates that are close to him find it to be awkward or, you know, nerve-breaking considering he's the god of the underworld and why would he be telling dad jokes? Who knows? There is more, don't worry. I'm just, like, looking down by pushing the button down to see what else I wrote. So Hades asks about what she sees in him. Persephone tells him he's actually one of the first men to be real with her. As you remember from the bar, she, like, I can't remember what I said specifically there. I know I probably should have rewatched my video. But they did have, like, moments alone in the bar, so maybe I probably fucked up already. And, yeah, let's get back to me reading it. And he makes her feel balanced after their previous dates. As for the future dates would become a pattern. Hades and Persephone growing closer, meeting in secret. Hades bribing other gods to keep hush hush as he's used to using his wealth as a way to get what he wants. And of course, because so many connections to other gods and goddesses and opportunities, they would say you know, they would stay hush-hush. Desi would see Persephone leave for one of the dates and decides to blackmail her to become more recognized by their mother, Persephone having to purposely act dumb or make scenes in order to uplift Desi. And I know that sounds immature, but you gotta remember, Desi is actually a lot younger than Persephone, who's 21. Desi would be around, I would say, 14, 15-ish, and she thinks if she just has Persephone act dumb or do something of the sorts that, you know, Demeter might recognize her more. And it is a childish thought, but I think that childishness, that childishness, childishness, oh my gosh, I am having a bad day speaking today. I am sorry, but yeah, she probably thinks that might turn off Demeter and she'll become the better daughter. <sighs> And so during one of Hades' days off, being at a bar with his brothers to celebrate, uh, I would say another victory of some kind or an announcement or whatever, Hades finally asks Zeus if Hera has calmed down about the proposal idea. Zeus tells Hades that he doesn't really know and asks him if he's over Persephone. Hades admits no. Hades asks Zeus if he would have let him marry Persephone during that time for the last scene for season one. So Zeus finally answers with a casual yes, 
to get Hades off his back so he can continue drinking. As you see from here, Hades starts to think of a way to get married to Persephone in secret after getting the quotation marks okay from Zeus. When Artemis is hanging out with Persephone, now this is like a couple of episodes later after some more, I don't know, scenes on Demeter's property and Demeter feeling a little anxious for some reason, but she's not too sure of what's going to happen. Just feeling like something's going to happen, but she isn't too sure. And so we have Artemis hanging out with Persephone again. She brings up the many times of Persephone using her as a shield from her mother, asking exactly why she did so to begin with and without telling her or the others. Persephone admits she wanted to keep her mother off her back and figured Artemis wouldn't mind. Artemis and Persephone argue, leading to them separating as friends for the rest of the season. This would, you know, Artemis would want to honor her, Athena, and Hestia's reputation as they can't keep, you know, help Persephone hide away some kind of secret that they have no clue what it is. They don't want to be associated with it. So they kindly push her away before, you know, anything were to happen. So remember, the goddesses of eternal maidenhood does not exist in this. They're instead just, you know, free, independent, single ladies who just focus on themselves, but they will not take shit from anyone else, especially in the case of what Persephone does with them, using their, you know, reputation as, you know good goddesses that could do no wrong as a way to get her mother off her back if she were ever to use that excuse. We are almost done and I'm like, holy banana bread. There is still so much I've written. Okay. So yeah, they are no longer friends for the rest of season two. Desi is going through more drama during this time as the blackmail has become boring and is looking for something more. She soon discovers that Demeter could care less about Desi as she's still focused on Persephone and she grows more anger from this, deciding to tell Demeter once and for all. Over time, Hades and Persephone send letters forming a plan of their marriage this would be the case of the kidnapping of Persephone. It's weeks after they send their last letter to each other, giving Persephone the chance to be at the first place she was seen at for Hades to abduct her. She would continuously do this every day until Hades was sure that he was ready, because during this time, he, he admits to Persephone he isn't sure. He wants to love her, but he isn't sure how he feels just yet and there will be time of him basically contemplating his feelings is he willing to go through this what's the consequences he's not sure and you know moving forward he decides he's ready so during that time of the abduction desi finally tells demeter who thinks desi is just overreacting as she knows persephone better than anyone not realizing this would be the first time that Desi would be right, going as far as to admitting that Desi should learn to keep to herself unless she was asked, getting into a heated argument as Demeter tells Desi she's lucky to be here with her and acknowledged as her daughter by the mortals. You know, since Desi is a product of what happened between her and Poseidon, and in a lot of versions, Demeter, like, I wouldn't say a lot, but like in a, a lot different versions, there is her either abandoning Desipina, Desipina, or, you know, keeping her. It's, it, it changes depending on who is telling you and what they're saying. So in this one, she does keep Desi just as a token to kind of keep away from her father, but not really enough to bond as with her 
like with her bonding with her as mother and daughter. And so when Demeter goes to check on Persephone, she sees Persephone and them friends rush to Demeter, telling her that Persephone's been taken. Cue what's happened previously before they ran to Demeter, showing Hades making a scene, you know, getting onto his chariot and abducting Persephone. Because I actually needed to see that scene seeing a creepy chariot coming out of nowhere and Pades and Persephone getting away on their getaway chariot that that's that's what I wanted to see and just like in the original story we see wait I know people will get on my butt about if I say this name wrong um let me just use translate real quick okay Hecate, 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 okay, Hecate. So we see Hecate, who witnesses the event, as well as Helios, who saw the event of who took her, leaving both of them, like, you know, Hecate still works with Hades to some extent, but, you know, when she finds out what happened, she immediately goes to the underworld, only to find out that, you know, Hades has hidden Persephone somewhere in the more like underworld and she wouldn't be able to find him if he if she tried. Anyways, finding out that her beloved daughter has been taken, Demeter demands everyone to look for her daughter, including Desi. But Desi having the realization that Demeter ne- Demeter's never cared about her decides to leave her after Demeter tells everyone to search for her daughter. And, you know, this would end, like, you know, Desi would just be off. She would try and find her own thing because it does come back later in a different season, maybe later. Like, I'm contemplating if I should just keep her off for one season or not, but you guys will find out soon enough in the third season. (sighs) <sighs> At the very end, it's revealed that Persephone and Hades happily together hiding away in one of Hades' many homes as Demeter is heartbroken about her missing daughter. This would be the start of season... Like, well, season three won't happen for, like, another few days afterwards or a week or so afterwards where it does expand on more information about the consequences and everything that goes on for Demeter during season three. And that's where we're left off for season two, where Demeter is heartbroken about her missing daughter. Persephone and Hades are happily together and ready to start their next phase of their plan, not realizing what kind of consequences could happen in the next season. So yeah, that's where we're leaving off, guys. I'm sorry I didn't have any art to show you guys, but eh, what can you do? But I really enjoyed writing this. I know it's not, you know, as interesting and such, but I kind of want to leave it to your guys' imagination. This is just kind of like me giving you a brief summary of different ideas and concepts that Rachel could have used or implemented into the story to make it more either accurate to some degree or more inviting for people but that's just me hopefully you enjoyed this and if you did and if you are new here please hit that subscribe button it would mean the world to me and stay safe stay cool and most importantly guys stay hydrated this is dazzling kate signing the hell Out of here.